the story. Right. One of the questions, one of the things uh, people ask about is why we make our male patients shave. And uh, so that helps us uh, touch on anesthesia and how the anesthetic works and what you can expect this morning. So right now, all of us are sitting here kind of comfortable and without even thinking about it, a lot of things are happening automatically. Um, we're breathing. We're breathing not too fast and not too slow, just right. And uh, if we think about it, uh, we might be able to mess that up by trying to breathe too fast or trying to breathe too slow, but after a while, the automatic controls will kick in. Another thing that's happening is as you get stuck in the back of your throat, again without thinking about it, whether you're drinking a Coca-Cola or eating a sandwich or just having saliva that normally appears in the back of your throat, you have a flap valve called the epiglottis which is constantly monitoring that whole area and if there's milk or cookies or a hamburger or something that's got to go, it automatically closes the airway and lets the liquid or solid go down the esophagus, down the right pipe. And all those things happen automatically because of brainstem reflexes, which keep us in that kind of healthy, safe situation, breathing and protecting our airway. Now, <clears throat> for you to go to sleep so that you could have a hip replacement or open heart surgery or a gastric bypass, we put your brain into a deep sedation and anesthesia which is great because you wouldn't feel any of the discomfort of surgery. That's one of the wonderful things about anesthesia. One of the disadvantages is with that general anesthetic, you also lose those two breathing and airway protective reflexes. So as you go to sleep, it's not just sleep like what you sleep at night, but it's such a deep sleep that the brain stem reflex that keeps you breathing at exactly the right rate stops. And the second thing is that that little flat valve reflex that protects gunk from going down the wrong pipe also is lost. So when we do anesthesia, we also have to recognize that your airway and your breathing reflexes are gone, and so we have to take control of that. And we do that. One of the things we do is we put the breathing tube in the back of your throat, down, and, and then back up to the front of your neck into the trachea and that protects the airway and then it also lets us breathe externally for you. And so there is a transition where you go from where you are now, breathing comfortable with all those reflexes intact, to fast asleep with us having a breathing tube in place and breathing for you. And that transition is a lot like the takeoff and landing of an airplane. They talk about how the most important part of a uh, airplane flight is that kind of takeoff and landing and the going to sleep and waking up part of anesthesia are the most serious parts because it's where we have to go from wide awake and under complete control of the airway to fast asleep and us in charge of the airway. And that transition is an important one. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about that. First of all, we want to do it so you're completely comfortable and it doesn't bother you at all. And you met a whole bunch of people yesterday who went through the same experience and they all seemed real happy. Most of them didn't remember a thing about it. They had no trouble. And I can report to you, they had no problems. They had no low blood pressure, no low oxygen, no irregular heartbeats, no problems with that. And that's our goal. We want this smooth, simple placement of the breathing tube. We don't want you to be aware of it or bothered by it. I think we might have had one person yesterday who talked about having a bit of a sore throat. Remember that one gentleman, one of the first first couple people. But other than that, everybody basically did terrific and we did that transition to take off and landing, so to speak, in 10 people last week with no trouble. Now part of the take off and landing is you get some medicine intravenously and you don't remember anything else and you drift off to sleep. Now we have a couple of moments to place the breathing tube while you are just uh, not breathing on your own because of the medicine and because you're anesthetized. And that couple of minutes usually requires us to just put a little blade in the back of your throat and we can see the trachea and we put the breathing tube in. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. But in some cases, that can be kind of hard. Especially if you're a big person, if you have a lot of uh, fatty tissue here, 
it can be hard to kind of make that turn and go up into the trachea. And so sometimes we have to put a mask on and breathe for you for a couple of minutes and then look a second time and maybe give some different medicine. Sometimes we'll even use a bronchoscope to place it. So instead of having 30 seconds or, or a minute to uh, go without having a deep breath, you might go three or four or five or six minutes. And then that's when we want to be able to put that scuba mask on and breathe for you until we get the breathing tube in. Now imagine that you had a great big Santa Claus-like beard. Okay, So I'll take you back about nine years ago. We had a, a very nice gentleman from Blacksburg, Virginia, and he had one of these real dense, stiff, standout, wiry beards. Great big Santa Claus type beard. And we put him to sleep for the surgery, and we went to look and put the breathing tube in, and we couldn't get the breathing tube in. It was difficult. He had what's called a difficult airway. Well, that's no problem, because we just put the scuba mask on and breathe for him. But imagine the scuba mask on the Santa Claus beard. And not, you know, soft, kind of hair, downy hair like a, a newborn baby, but stiff, wiry, sticking out kind of hair. And then you could imagine, and we put the mask on, and we went to breathe. We want to seal so that the air would go in his lungs. Instead, it went and just went out along the side. Well, then we have a measure of oxygen. It's a little beeper, and it's constantly going beep, 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 and the high pitch is good, because that's a good amount of oxygen. And boop, boop, boop is low and bad. And so as we were working and trying to get the mask on, we're breathing for him, and it's going beep, boop, 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 and my pulse rate goes up, and we get kind of tense. We tried to put the breathing tube in again, because the mask wouldn't get the suction, and Da, da, da. So anyways, he got uh, pretty low oxygen, and we were wondering what to do, and then I remembered that the barbers and the surgeons were both in the same guild. So I got a razor that is not the best kind of razor. They're used for kind of shaving people for surgery, and within a moment, he had lost most of the beard around here with a few nicks and cuts. <laughs> then we put the mask on, and his oxygen came up. Boop, 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 boop. I felt better. And then we took a few moments to put his breathing tube in. Now, the other interesting part of the story is when he woke up, he was extremely angry. He said, I have never had my beard off. My family has never seen me without my beard. I did not give you permission to shave my beard. I'm going to sue you. I am so angry. And I said, well, you don't understand because, you know, we were having trouble keeping you alive. He said, I don't care. You didn't have permission to shave my beard. I said, no, no, you misunderstand me. I said, you were about to die, you know. And he goes, I don't care. He was really angry. And <laughs> kind of hole in your throat then. <laughs> yeah. So after a while, he got over it, but he was pretty upset about it. So after that, we have everybody shave their beards. And the idea is for there's always a possibility we might need to make that seal with that little scuba mask. And if you don't have that hair there, it just gives us a better seal. And as a heavy person, it takes more effort to raise the chest and to lift it. So we want everything in our favor. So that's the story behind the shaving your mustache kind of business. So.